You're watching Behind the Headlines. I'm Lee Pacquiao. As Congress and the White House continue to look for ways to formulate policy on protecting critical infrastructure from cybersecurity threats, they are finding no shortage of special interests trying to chime in with their policy preferences. Joining me now to clue us into the emerging lobby for cybersecurity policy, we have David Ransom, partner at McDermott, Will & Emery. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for inviting me. Sure thing. So there were something like 513 filings by consultants and companies weighing in on how Congress should approach cybersecurity issues in 2012. That's a major increase from prior years. What, in your opinion, is spurring this tremendous interest all of a sudden? I, th I think what's spurring the interest, Lee, is the fact that uh, the cybersecurity issue cuts across such a wide range of industries, so it affects everything from critical infrastructure like dams, the electrical get grid, the transportation system, financial services, telecommunications. So you have all this collection, uh, really a broad spectrum, if you will, uh, of industries that are potentially affected by cybersecurity legislation as well as the recent executive order that was signed by the president. Mm. Is it at a point where professional service providers like law firms are, are starting to build practice centers around this topic? What does the current cybersecurity lobbying landscape look like? I think that lobbying landscape looks uh, similar, if you will, uh, to other issues like tax reform, immigration reform, uh, health care reform when that was debated in the Congress. And that is, given, like I said, the broad sweep of uh, uh, the industries that are affected by cybersecurity, uh, you, you have industries wanting to go to Congress and uh, educate members and staff. Uh, because they're really worried about unintended consequences, potential effects on their businesses, on their industries of cybersecurity legislation and already the, the executive order signed by the president. So I think that's really what's driving uh, uh, the increased lobbying uh, registrations on cybersecurity is just simply the fact that uh, this is something that is continuing to be debated in the Congress. Nothing happened in the 112th Congress. In my personal opinion, it's unlikely uh, there's unlikely to be legislation enacted in the 113th in the 113th Congress. So I, I, I really think that the, the, the reason you're seeing all these lobbying registrations on this issue is just the breadth of uh, the industries that are affected. And the fact that cybersecurity itself means many things to, to different industries. For example, uh, for, for some it, it's whether or not they're construed as critical infrastructure. Uh, for other uh, interest groups, it's, it's data security and privacy issues, civil liberty issues, if you will. What, what's done when, uh, when, when, a, when, a, when a, uh, there, there's hacking that goes on and uh, you know, uh, personal information uh, it, it is hacked. So, so I think that's really uh, what's driving all of this interest in cybersecurity. Mm. And let me add one other thing. I think, I think there's a great deal of controversy over this. Uh, uh, but, but I've told my clients that they need to get in and, and talk to members of Congress, talk to staff, educate them on the is issues that are of interest to them, because God forbid if something does happen, uh, for example, if you take down the electrical get grid on the, on the East Coast or thing, uh, something of that magnitude, a uh, cyber attack of that magnitude, my personal view is, and I was on the Hill on 9-11, is you're likely to see then uh, a bipartisan consensus in the Congress in very short order enacting legislation that li is likely to include regulation. What's the next big tension point in this debate, in your opinion? I think, I think the big tension point will be how the executive order signed by the president is, uh, is implemented. Um, the federal government, the, the Department of Homeland Security is charged with identifying critical infrastructure. Um, there's been a concern by many industries that this was simply a backdoor attempt to, uh, for the federal government to regulate private sector entities. Um, and so I think the implementation of the executive order is, is, is a key point, Lee, mm. and, and, and I think there will continue to be activity in the Congress uh, on various cybersecurity uh, measures. How does the but, government but define critical infrastructure in this day and age? I would imagine that's a, uh, an intricate dance. Yeah, it, it is an intricate dance, and the executive order does have uh, a specific set of language that defines critical infrastructure that relates to uh, a catastrophic effect, either nationally or regionally, that affects the, the country's national security or economic security. 
Uh, and, and, but, it, but it affects, as I mentioned at the outset, many different industries. For example, is a medical facility uh, in a major metropolitan area critical infrastructure? I would think probably yes. Um, and, and I don't know that medical providers necessarily are thinking of themselves in that way and whether or not they need to do various things uh, per the executive order and the, re and, uh, and the implementation of the executive order, as I mentioned. So, so I think that's likely how things are going to play out. But, but again, in the back of my mind anyway, and there's all kinds of uh, you know, chatter, whether it is our news stories, if you will, about, about attacks on financial service companies, about uh, potential espionage that's directed by uh, uh, foreign governments. So this issue, cybersecurity, in my judgment, covers a lot of different areas uh, from, from the espionage to, to, to hackers who simply want to destroy or disrupt uh, private sector entities. Uh, it's a, certainly an interesting space, and I think it's going to become a, a lot busier for professional service providers, much like uh, you folks over at McDermott, Will, and Emory. David, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Really interesting. Well, thank, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. That's David Ransom from the law firm McDermott, Will, and Emory. If you'd like to learn more about the cases and issues we just discussed, be sure to go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube, and you can follow our updates on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.